Where did you get the nickname Bo Peep? Where did that come from? Um, that nickname came from my grandmother when I was younger. It's just a name that she called me once before, and like it just stuck from that point. So you just been rolling with it since? Yes, ever since. Like no one really called me my real name. Like even in high school, the superintendent, the principal, <laughs> nobody <laughs> called me my real name. So it's like. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Do a lot of coaches know you by your real name? <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, some of them do and some don't. It's, it's surprising. <laughs> so when you've been talking to the scouts, the, the, have they learned to just, just go with the nickname? Yes, most of them do. <laughs> All right. All right. And then with, uh, you know, with the curfews and everything, what have you been doing to kind of pass the time when you're not working out? Past the time? Oh, yeah. past the time, pretty much I'm just resting, recovering, and going over through, like, defensive schemes and learning defensive plays every day. I watch a lot of videos of old veterans, such as, like, Darrell Revis, Richard Sherman. I watch a lot of Jamal Adams and and uh, Tyran Matthew, too, to uh, pretty much learn different positions as well. All right. So just trying to uh, kind of study up on the dudes that are, that are doing it where you're trying to be? Yes, sir. Just trying to get a step ahead. All right. And uh, obviously, I know uh, <clears throat> you've had a, a two lane. There's been a few guys uh, from, from the defensive back unit that have been drafted these past couple seasons. Uh, have you talked to those guys about this process? And I mean, obviously, your process has been much different. But what have they, they kind of told you? And uh, have you kind of leaned on them for you know some advice throughout this? Uh, yes, I've talked to them. Um, I talk to Donnie almost every day, and he tells me a lot of the times it's, it's, it's pretty much just being able to be able to run with most of these guys nowadays and learning the schemes as fast as you can. I mean, once you learn, like, where your help is and everything on the field, then that'll be good for you. But being able to run with the receivers nowadays is a, is a big part of it, you know, being able to stay to the weight to where I can run each and every time and fluidly get out of my transitions. And mainly, he just give, they all give me great advice about standing on top of everything, making sure I'm in shape, ready to roll, and coming in and just play ball. All right. And uh, so you got to see how they went through the process. I mean, I had to take visits and, you know, got to meet the coaches face-to-face. Other than the combine, uh, you know, you've pretty much had to do everything kind of the way we're, we're talking right now through the Skype and the video chats. What's that been like for you? Uh, it, it's kind of crazy, you know. I, I was looking forward to going on some of those visits and looking at the facilities, but, I mean, everyone's just improvising right now at the time, so it's just like these FaceTime calls is what coaches are looking forward to most of now, just to see what type of person you are and go over plays. So it's pretty much like we're not losing anything from it, but there are some advantages and some disadvantages of it. So we're just trying to do everything and I'm just cooperating with the coaches on the Skypes and the video call and making sure everything is fluid. But I mean, I, I would have loved to go on some of those visits to, to those facilities though. Yeah. Yeah. But as long as you wind up at one, uh, come training camp time, I think exactly. you, you'll probably be all right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. Good. When you when you talk to the coaches, what are you trying to, you know, convey to them? What are you trying to tell them about yourself? Uh, because uh, obviously you can't have those face-to-face meetings, but what are you trying to really get across to them? Uh, really just to know the type of person that I am, uh, being me. Uh, if you've been around me or known me, then everyone knows I'm a high-energy guy, and so that pretty much gives an effect on most guys around me. It's like it's not just like I have energy for myself and just only for myself, but I provide energy for more than me, and I can push people to exceed farther than they think. Just the energy will bring a lot to any facility or any place, not only just the coaching staff or the players, but people in the city and the community and everyone around you as well. All right. And, uh, you know, obviously you played in New Orleans. I got to ask you, uh, have you heard from the Saints and have people, who, you know, that you know from school, uh, you know, saying, hey, man, be nice when you be, be on your super best behavior when you talk to them? <laughs> Has that been a, a conversation? Yeah, I, I've talked. I've talked to the Saints, and we went through most of everything as the other coaches, and it's been a great experience. You know, I have a lot of family. Most of my family pretty much stays in New Orleans, and 
and all of my family from home here in Mississippi, they're all Saints fans. So it's just pretty much, they all want me to end up with the Saints. So it's just like, all right, you never know what could happen. I mean, I wouldn't mind playing in New Orleans. So it'll be, either way it works, I'll be fine with it. It's, it sounds like, uh, you know, you just, you're, you're ready for that opportunity. You don't care where it is. Yes, sir. That's exactly what I'm saying. It doesn't matter at all. All right. Uh, Tulane, uh, you know, we talked about it a little earlier, but the last few years, y'all have been putting out some some pretty quality DBs. Uh, have you thought about, you know, uh, kind of continuing that legacy? Is that something that you've you know, even considered at all? Yes, sir. I've considered it. Uh, as much like during the season, uh, I don't pretty much think about it as much, but being that looking back at the time, it has been a tradition of those DBs, and I feel like me coming out this year would be a bigger part of it, and I feel like I just want to keep continuing to leave that legacy behind for guys that's coming up. You know, the DBs that's behind me, I feel like they have a great year this year as well, and they'll soon continue that legacy, and I feel like it can just keep moving forward and forward each year. All right, and uh, I talked to Mooney uh, last week. He said that, um, you know, y'all hadn't really messed with him about, you know, being the first receiver to come out of Tulane for, in a while. Uh, y'all haven't messed with him about it yet? Nah, we haven't messed with him about it yet. He know I'll be at him as soon as he get drafted or anything, you know. He know I'll be at him. <laughs> All right. And, uh, what was it like, uh, you know, kind of getting to go to the combine with your teammate, and what was that experience like? Uh, it was a great experience. We didn't get to see each other as much, but when, when we did have a little time, we wanted to get together and talk to each other, see how things were going. But, I mean, I feel like it was a great experience for us both being that we both came out or we were the last two commitments to Tulane in our class, in the 2016 class, and I feel like it's just a great accomplishment for both of us. And moving us forward in our life, I feel like it's a great thing. And being at the combine with him, me and him personally have a great relationship with each other, so it's just a once-in-a-lifetime feeling that I'll never forget. It's a memorable thing. And then looking back at it, uh, you know, that combine probably is even more important now because you haven't been able to get those private workouts with teams, and you guys didn't even get the pro day. So uh, did you feel like you kind of got to show everything you wanted to um, up there in Indy? At Indy, uh, not exactly. I don't feel like I got to show everything, but I feel like I'm great enough to where I'm in a position with uh, some of these teams, some coaches just looking at film from past, from the past year and just talking to me as a person and going through different schemes with different teams. I feel like I've set myself in a great place, but as far as like the workout-wise, I feel like some people may want it different times or anything, but, you know, I, I just – let God handle it and control everything, and it'll work out the way he does. All right. All right. And then uh, I guess lastly, you, you mentioned, you know, kind of watching a lot of YouTube videos of some of the vets and the guys that are where you're trying to get to. Uh, is there anything you picked up from those that, uh, you know, say, all right, that's something I can, you know, I do well. Let me, uh, let me make sure I let the, the coaches know I, I could do that. Oh, yeah, I picked up from Darrell Revis, uh, his patience and the way that he stays square at the line of his point of attack is just a great thing that I do, and I actually started working on that, and I've been better with that. I I've gotten better over the time with that, so I feel like that's a big part that helped me a lot. Darrell Revis has great film tapes that any DP could go on and watch and just gain any type of knowledge from that, so it was a great thing. So. All right. All right, man. Well, really appreciate you uh, taking the time to chat with me. I appreciate and, you for having and, uh, me. Oh, uh, and obviously, good luck uh, in a couple weeks. So, hoping to hear your name called. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me.